In the previous video, we got introduced to the concept of scattering. Now we will investigate how the size of a particle influences the scattering of light. In doing so, we will answer an age-old question, namely, why does the sky appear blue? In this video, we will learn about the different scattering regimes and when each is valid. We will identify the difference between Rayleigh and Mie scattering. Finally, we will discuss how the differences between scattering regimes can be applied to further improve the performance of our solar cells. Back to that blue sky. This picture of a bright white sun set against a clear blue sky is familiar for all of us. This picture does however raise some questions. Why does the sky appear blue and the sun bright white? And on that same note, why does the sun appear red when he is rising or setting? The short answer is wavelength dependent scattering. A more complete answer, however, involves the relation between the wavelength of light and the size of the particles it encounters. If the product of the refractive index and the diameter of a particle is much smaller than the wavelength of a photon, a type of scattering takes place that is known as Rayleigh scattering. However, if the refractive index diameter product is of the same order of magnitude as the photon wavelength, then we enter the domain of Mi scattering. Microscopic scattering occurs for particles much larger than the wavelength. Microscopic scattering involves the refraction and reflection we discussed earlier in this section. We will first look into Rayleigh scattering. The shown equation is used to describe the light intensity at a certain angle after a light particle interaction. The angular intensity distribution depends on the refractive indices of the particle and surrounding medium on the wavelength of the light, on the particle diameter and the distance to the particle. The angular intensity distribution of a Rayleigh scatter light wave takes the form of the shown figure. As much of the light is scattered in the forward direction towards zero degrees as in the 180 degrees backward direction. We can also observe that the light is scattered into all outgoing directions if not equally. Furthermore, we can gather from the first part of the equation that Rayleigh scattering is strongly wavelength dependent. The intensity scattered towards a certain angle depends on 1 over the wavelength to the power 4. This strong wavelength dependence of the scattering intensity is visualized by the shown graph. The y-axis shows the scattered intensity at a certain wavelength divided by the scattered intensity at the same angle at a wavelength of 250 nanometers. We can see that particles with a diameter much smaller than the wavelengths of the visible light are very effective at scattering blue light. It happens to be the case that the air in our atmosphere is full of Rayleigh-sized particles like oxygen and nitrogen. This figure demonstrates why the sky is blue. Imagine we are the observer on the ground. Light from the sun that directly reaches our eyes contains all wavelengths in the visible spectrum and therefore appears white. From all other angles, we can only observe light that is scattered by the particles in our atmosphere. As we can see in the figure, a fraction of a solar ray is scattered in our direction every time a light wave interacts with a Rayleigh-sized particle in the atmosphere. Furthermore, as we observed from the graph, blue light is scattered most effectively. Therefore, from all directions in the sky, the intensity of blue light that reaches our eyes is dominant. Hence, the sky appears blue. But what about larger particles? Gustav Mie first derived the solutions to the Maxwell equations where the particle size is of the same order of magnitude as the photon wavelength. 
Mean scattering is much less dependent on the wavelength and therefore scatters blue and red light about as effectively. We can gather that, unlike Rayleigh scattering, me scattering occurs mainly in the forward directions. The angle of distribution does depend strongly on the particle size. The figure shows the angle of distribution of three increasing particle sizes. On the left is a particle with a Rayleigh distribution. In the middle, a me distribution, while on the right side, a me distribution with an even larger particle. Increasing the particle size even further would lead to a straight line as dictated by the Fresnel equations. The mainly forward direction of me scattering influences our perception of the sun as it rises or sets. When we see the sun setting in the evening or rising in the morning, the sun appears low on the horizon. Because of this angle between the sun and our position on Earth, light has to travel a larger distance through our atmosphere than during daytime. This means that light encounters more particles in the air and more scattering events take place. With every scattering event, the intensity of light is distributed. Therefore, many Rayleigh scattering events cause the blue light from the sun to be fully scattered. The intensity of the blue light reaching our eyes is therefore so low that it is no longer observable. Red light also undergoes an increased number of scattering events at sunset. For me scattering, the angular distribution is mainly pointed in the forward direction. Me scattering therefore does not cause red light to be fully diffused. The different scattering properties of red and blue light are taken into account during solar cell design as well. An example thereof can be found in a multijunction micromorph solar cell. Incident light first encounters a high band gap amorphous silicon absorber layer responsible for the blue light absorption. Red light is transmitted through this layer and absorbed in the second microcrystalline silicon absorber layer with a lower band gap energy. With these functions in mind, the amorphous silicon layer has a very small Rayleigh sized features. These features effectively scatter the blue light but hardly affect the red light. The microcrystalline silicon texturing, on the other hand, has larger features, so effectively scatter the incident red and infrared light. So in summary, we saw how Rayleigh scattering occurs for particle sizes smaller than the photon wavelength. When the particles and the photon wavelength are of roughly equal size, me scattering occurs. In the case of Rayleigh scattering, light is effectively scattered in all directions. And Rayleigh-sized particles are very effective at scattering small wavelength photons. This is why the skies appear blue. We discussed how me scattering, on the other hand, is less wavelength dependent and therefore scatters all visible wavelengths more or less equally. Me scattering occurs predominantly in forward direction, which explains why a setting and rising sun appears red. Finally, we discussed how texturing features with different sizes can be used to effectively scatter different parts of the spectrum.